The question now arises upon final reading and consideration of Senate Current Resolution 3A. Representative Nose. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker and colleagues. Um, you know, I've, I've talked a lot in the last few weeks about uh, former State Representative Mitch Greenlick. And as I've said, there's almost never a day that goes by when I don't think about my former friend and, and colleague. Um, you know, as I, as I work here on health care bills and behavioral health bills, I do think a lot about what he would have thought or wanted or questioned with regard to the things that we're doing and the policy choices that we're making. It's been a little over a year today, since today that we got the news that he passed away. And I can't think of a better way to honor him and his legacy by passing a resolution honoring the amazing things he accomplished, both in his career and here in this chamber. The resolution does a very good job of recounting his career. I thought about reading it over, but it's very long. And so I, I, I'm not gonna do that, but it does share a lot about his family and his accomplishments. And while many of us remember Representative Greenlick as one of our colleagues, as the resolution points out, his career extended far before his time in the legislature. In 1964, Representative Mitch Greenlick, he wasn't a representative then, but he moved from here from, with his family to Portland to start the Kaiser Permanente Center for Health Research, which he directed for 30 years. He also served as the vice president for research of the Kaiser Foundation Hospital and was the first director of the Kaiser Permanente Dental Program, working toward an integrated model for dental and, mental and medical health. Additionally, Representative Greenlick was an esteemed educator serving as a professor and chair of the Department of Public Health and Preventative Medicine at the Oregon Health Sciences and University School of Medicine and as an adjunct professor of sociology and social work at Portland State University. With such a lengthy and impressive resume, the state legislature was lucky to have him as a member and as a leader. As I've said, he was one of the best mentors in any job I ever had. Um, he possessed the rare gift of both actual practical experience and knowledge on the topics of healthcare and legislating and he had a pretty strong vision for what he wanted. I've said this more than a few times too, that he hazed me pretty good in my first term, tasking me to run a work group on a complex topic like prescription drug pricing in the United States. I learned a lot from that and it made me a better legislator. And finally, when I look back on all my memories of Mitch, it's impossible not to think of his wife, Harriet. You often hear that when a person is elected to office, their partner is a huge part of their support system, and that person plays a big role. Mr. Speaker, when talking about the role Harriet played in Mitch's legislative career, describing her as being a huge part of it is, is kind of an understatement. She was completely at Mitch's side on the House floor during committee meetings and, of course, in his office, and for the last few years, she served as a chauffeur as well. They were married for over 60 years and her devotion to him is pretty inspiring. And so I'm pleased that the resolution was amended to honor Harriet as well as my former colleague. And it probably would have been what he would have wanted. Though he's probably bummed it's a Senate resolution and not a House resolution, Mr. Speaker. Harriet, if you're watching the live stream of this as, at home, I just want to say that I'm grateful for your dedication to the service of our people, the people of this state as well. Our state was lucky to have both of you, and thank you for supporting my colleague in his legislative career. And Mitch, if you're out there somewhere listening from the beyond, I thank you for the many things I learned from you, but I also want to thank you for many things that you accomplished for this state. And I'm proud to have called you a friend and mentor you are sorely missed by me and many others and colleagues i urge an i vote on scr3 and we'll start the one minute clock
Further discussion? Speaker Kotick. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the resolution. To the resolution. Colleagues, um, we've spoken a lot about our departed friend, Mitch Greenlink, on this floor, so I'm going to be very brief. I just have two comments. One, um, Mitch was always uh, the member that uh, my first couple uh, times being nominated for speaker, he would do the introduction, he would do the nomination. I was always so incredibly honored by that because he was a man of integrity and a fantastically uh, lived life of service and uh, education and the things that he has done to make this state better was always a privilege to serve with him. So I was incredibly honored when he would make the nomination uh, for me to be speaker. So for me not to say thank you one last time on the floor to Mitch, I think I just wanna say thank you to him because I do know he's watching. And second, I just want to say to Harriet, you are a treasure. We miss you when things are a little easier. We look forward to uh, grabbing a beverage and catching up on the session. We know you've been watching, and uh, we love you and just want you to know that. So thank you, colleagues. I urge your support of SCR 3A. Thank you. Further discussion? Representative Greg Smith. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to the resolution. To the resolution. Uh, colleagues, I wanted to make sure as we pass this resolution today that we do it in a bipartisan manner. Uh, and so I'm pleased to stand up and, and acknowledge the good work of a colleague, a fellow legislator in Mitch Greenlick. Um, I actually had a chance to get to know Mitch relatively well one weekend when we had a prescription drug issue and he chose to come out to Hepner and to meet with our small little rural pharmacy and to see firsthand the issue that we were trying to deal with. And that meant a lot to me that, that he would be willing to take a Saturday and probably a Sunday uh, to drive out and to visit with uh, our local pharmacy and to learn what was going on. And I think that's the type of person that Mitch was. Mitch was very intellectual, um, it's not a little grouchy, um, but you always knew where he stood. Um, and I just, I just shared with this body, it was an honor to, to work with him uh, for 18 years. Yeah, I think it's about 18 years. And so uh, I hope you'll join me in supporting uh, Mitch and his wife and uh, voting aye on SCR. 3A. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further discussion? Representative Clem. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to the resolution. To the resolution. I just, just wanted to make just two quick comments. Uh, we had a really wonderful legislative delegation to China that Mitch and his son came along with, and that was a really good way to get to know people better. Um, and. I had been a committee member in one of Mitch's committees, um, and I certainly heard his um, acerbic wit, his um, ability to shred a witness who was off topic. Um, but it was fun to see the dad and the um, and the you know the gentleman that Mitch was. And then the last um, thing I wanted to share was there was a point in February um, when he was sick, and we weren't sure if he was going to be back um, yet, and. Um, I texted him kind of a sentimental thing and he, you know, he said, thank you very nicely. And, and then I finished with, you know, you're an independent and honorary SOB and I love it. And I want to be just like you when I grow up. And he wrote back, you've got a great start. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I would just share that. <laughs> Further discussion, Representative Dexter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to the resolution. To the resolution. I just want to say as the inheritor of House District 33 that the honor that I have serving this district is enormously magnified due to the service of Representative Greenlick. Uh, he and Harriet took incredible time with me to mentor me as I ran for his seat. And indeed, the day before he died, uh, we discussed some issues with the campaign, and I begged him once again for his 
endorsement, and he once again told me no, but keep asking. And then at the end of it, he said, keep fighting. And the next morning, Senator Wagner texted me that he was gone, and I had nothing but a loss in my heart, which I know my district feels, and it is just a privilege to speak um, to him and hopefully to Harriet, Harriet this morning, and I, to urge and I vote. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, Representative Nose, do you wish to close? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just really briefly, um, I'll just read the summary from the resolution and, and, and call it that and say that it was a, a privilege to sort of memorialize in this way and thanks to all of you for joining in and sharing some of your funny vignettes, uh, Representative Clem and, and others. And uh, um, yeah, so be resolved by the Legislative Assembly of the State of Oregon that we, the members of the 81st Legislative Assembly, honor and celebrate the remarkable life and achievements of Representative Merwin, Ronald, Mitch, Greenlick, and we express our sincere and abiding gratitude for his service to the Legislative Assembly and all Oregonians, and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution shall be presented to the family of Representative Mitch Greenlick as an expression of our sympathy and condolences. And with that, colleagues, I, I urge your I vote on this. Thank you so much. I miss him. Those of the opinion that SCR 3A should be adopted will vote aye. Those opposed, no. The clerk will open the voting system. I know I speak for many of us. It was such an honor to serve with Mitch Greenlick, state representative from District 33, and our institution is a better place for his service. Senate current resolution 3A, having received the required majority, it is my honor to declare it adopted. <laughs> 